Okay, so Cavaliers playing hard to get. All right, okay. Well, we like the chase. I want some rest. Are we having fun yet? All right, just realized how creepy that sounded. I, I did not mean that in a creepy way. I'm, I'm sorry. All right, so guys, we're going to take a look at this segment. So we have not, or not watched, but listened to what they had to say about a uh, hoops hype that is had to say about Darius Garland uh, trade. We did go over the Donovan Mitchell extension possibility, but they it, it's some it's some news that's coming out of uh, Cleveland as far as how doable that actually is uh, for Garland. Now, before we take a look at that really quick, all right, I bring this up all the time. Spurs Invasion, please, please, please go subscribe to Spurs Invasion. Link in the description or link right below this video. Um, but if you head on over there, just subscribe. This is going to be my second channel in which I'll be doing more scripted content and more edited content. Uh, so, you know, obviously it'll be one to two videos a month. Uh, not like how we do daily stuff over here. Uh, but nonetheless, I did want to at least extend out our, our horizons a little bit. So I'll be changing up this or making this channel real nice and pretty. Okay. Um, so it, it's going to be pretty, going to be pretty fun. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. To, to say the least. All right, let's go ahead and listen to what they have to say here. Is Darius Garland available? They mentioned Jared Allen. I don't think any Spurs fans are interested in Jared Allen. I don't think. I don't know. I think we'll be cool with it, but price range, who knows? I don't know. This team better to compete with Boston going forward. Let's start with some of the moves that they could make. You've got Darius Garland and Jared Allen are two players that have come up as potential trade candidates that have been speculated by people now to my understanding cleveland has continued to tell teams they're not trying to move darius garland and jared allen mm -hmm. you know kobe altman talked about uh the plus minuses with those guys and and how they felt with them with darius they still think he's an all-star caliber guy he's young he's under contract for the next four years it would really take a lot for them to move him Jared mm. Allen to me, while I understand they want to keep him. So my hopes, <clears throat> my initial hopes was that a lot of teams would see like devalue Darius Garland because of what happened with the playoffs. And um, it's been reported a lot that Donovan Mitchell, because of his extension, that Garland would be out the door. Um, I don't think that there's a lot of beef between those two in particular or anything like that. Uh, but just as far as payment wise, they're, they, they're going to choose one or the other. And it hasn't really panned out between those two. Um, so I don't know how much I'm buying this. I, I do buy that they could potentially be telling people we're not that interested. You know, what, what are you what are you willing to give up? You know, um, and, and rather than, you know, coming across as desperate or whatever. I think that's an interesting one as well, because with Jarrett, you've got a guy like they got to figure out is Evan Mobley going to be a four or a five? Yeah. And, and ultimately they have made Evan Mobley a franchise cornerstone. I would say above Jared Allen in the pecking order. Yeah. So it, it's all going to come down to that. Um, you know, there, there's been Evan Mobley's really good. He should probably run five and some chatter about whether or not Cleveland would have interest in Brandon Ingram, but, I've gotten the sense from talking to league sources that Cleveland isn't enthralled with the idea of trading for him and then having to pay him a ton of money in a contract season. I'm, I'm quite confident that New Orleans would look at a guy like Darius Garland and value him if they were going to part with Ingram, but I'm not sure that it's a fit based on the intel I have there. So when you look at the trade market or not, for Darius Garland and, and Jared Allen, what what do you see going forward for them? That's a good question. San Antonio Spurs, we can give him a couple things. Some things come to mind for me. I think Michael, they would have to be blown away to consider it on, on both fronts. And they've gotten offers in the past for Jared Allen specifically. Teams have been poking around Jared for the last couple of years. And there's been interest in Darius Garland. I think there are teams that make sense for Darius. They Spurs. could use somebody like Darius. Spurs. San Antonio comes to mind, certainly. But if San Antonio is not going to give the Cavs either Wembenyama or Devin Vassell, then 
what are the Spurs going to offer the Cavs that the Cavs are willing to say yes to? Okay, the Cavs would be absolutely insane if they wanted either Wimba Nyama or Devin Fassell for Darius Garland. I, I am huge on Darius Garland. Do not get me wrong, okay? I, I am a fan of his, but I think that that will be asinine for them to expect that. I, I, I think that's a bit much, right? Um, I think... You know, giving them, I guess it depends on how people view Keldon, man. But giving them Keldon, giving them Malachi Branham, and maybe a couple picks, I think that that's doable, in my opinion. I think that that's, that's that, you know, that would be pretty nice. But no, dude, that would be crazy. What about, with that in mind, I got to ask you, because I've also heard San Antonio as well, to your point. Mm -hmm. um, because they need a young, true point guard for Victor Wemanyamba to pair with going forward. And yeah. Darius is that under long-term extension would cleveland be interested in the fourth and eighth pick overall in this draft because some yeah that's what i was thinking well i don't know fourth and eighth is pretty pretty rough but yeah maybe fourth eighth uh hornets uh Keldon. i i, I think that would be doable uh but no giving them devin for sale is, is is crazy the more that i think about this draft the more i kind of want to keep our fourth though to be honest with you guys maybe at least keep our eighth Give him the fourth, keep our eighth. I, I I think we can still manage to get one of the guys um, I'm high on. So. Some have asked this, and I, I don't particularly think that that's the move when you're trying to win now, but right. I, I'm going to float the question your way. Only if Cleveland felt like there was a pathway, because when it comes to trades, you know this, Michael, it's not necessarily the move itself. It's, it's the next move after that, when you're playing the game of chess. And they definitely do that, right? That was the whole reason why they grabbed Abaji. Um, in the NBA. It's it's what can you do with those assets after the fact. So if the Cavs felt like four and eight, that combination of four and eight, they could then turn around and turn that into something of more value to them that could reconfigure their roster, um, then I think they would consider that. But I just fast. don't know that there's that star player out there that, that fits Cleveland's timeline, um, that also fits the way that this roster is currently constructed, that they could realistically attain by using the fourth in the eighth pick. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, I think tough. they have enough valuable assets on their own in Jarrett and Darius that if they were to move- I guess there's, yeah, I guess there's not really a team out there that has a superstar, but really ready to just rebuild right now, right? You know, in 2024, it's not like this is the best draft in the world either. Move those guys. They would want more win now players. They would want somebody that they would consider potentially a better fit next to Donovan Mitchell. Or I unironically think Keldon Johnson is a fit, a good fit with Cleveland. Malachi as well. Somebody that they would consider a better fit next to Evan Mobley. And I just don't think four and eight gets that player back for them. Um, so I think they would want. I think they would want to be blown away for either guy. And I just, the more and more I look at the landscape out there in the NBA, I, I just don't know that there's an offer out there that would quote unquote, blow the Cavs away. And the other thing when it comes to Jared and Darius in particular, um, you know, the Cavs didn't have the kind of season that they would classify as a failure. They were one of eight teams that got to the conference semifinals. And it's not a situation where they're coming off an embarrassing playoff exit. Oh, man, teams got to really stop doing that, right? Especially if you're in the East. It, it's a failure. You, you didn't accomplish anything uh, by being the last 18. You, you just didn't. It's, it's the East. You, you didn't do anything. I mean, I know the Atlanta Hawks freaking, when they went to the, uh, the ECF, man, every single Atlanta Hawks fan is just sitting back saying, see, we're good. We're, we're great. We got this. We got this in a bag. And it's like, no, you don't. You're in the East. Stop it. Like last April against the Knicks, where it was clear that they had to make significant changes um, with the roster and they needed to make enhancements with the roster. And they went out and they added a bunch of different guys in free agency. But like this kind of season that they're coming off of, this isn't one to overreact to. This isn't one to panic about. This was this was a pretty good step forward for the organization. A second straight playoff appearance 
and the first time advancing past the first round without LeBron James in more than 30 years. I guess it's more relevant only if a team is literally sitting back and content. But it, it seems Cleveland Cavaliers, I, I would be, look, guys, I'll be hard pressed to believe. I think we got all we could out of this. I'll be hard pressed to believe that they don't uh, flirt with the idea of getting rid of Darius Garland because they just don't gel that well together. And if Mitchell's about to get this extension, I don't really see what you're what you're doing here. Um, but if they're expecting a lot uh, for Darius Garland, that's unfortunate. I don't know what will come out of that. But what we do know is the San Antonio Spurs have been asking about them um, and they're willing to, to put something on the table. Uh, giving them the fourth and eighth, I do think that he's worth that. I don't think that that's crazy, especially in a draft that's not that great. Um, but for me personally, I really care and value us getting a defensive wing first and foremost, even over a point guard, because I think that you will have more opportunities come 2025 uh, to to do that if you if you wanted to wait a little bit. Um, but you can get you can get both in this draft. That's fine. Uh, but I, I I really want to grab either Cody Williams, Ron Holland, or Buzelas if we can, uh, Castle, and I think that you could I get one of those four guys if you at least kept your eighth. I, I think a few of them are going to fall. Ron Holland, his stock has failed quite a bit, so that's good news. Um, Cody Williams' stock has went back up. Uh, and Booz Ellis has remained the same this entire time, so uh, you're probably going to need that fourth. And Castle is, just depending on who you talk to, we don't know where he's going to land. So, uh, But, okay, well, not good stuff. Usually I say good stuff, but that wasn't really good stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll see what comes out of it, but... If they're going to make this decision, they're going to have to do it pretty pretty quickly, right? It's, it's, it, they, they're going to package those two picks with something else. you you got to do it pretty quick. Uh, but anyways, I'll give it to you guys later. Till next time. Bye.